Raider Nation, what's going on? Today's show presented by Manscaped. It's Mitchell Renz here from Chat Sports, and guess what? My balls are silky smooth. Why? I use Manscaped, and you can too. Go to manscaped.com, use code Raiders. That way you can save 20% off and get free shipping on all of the best male grooming products out there. So coming up here on today's show is I'm going to give you all the training camp news that you can't afford to miss. The Silver and Black did not practice on Monday. However, there was a lot of updates over the last 24 hours. We're going to talk about Jimmy G. Should the Raiders rescind Josh Jacobs' franchise tag? That's going to be the final topic of discussion here on the Raiders Report. Before I get into my Raiders roundup, because I got six ready to crack open for you, the Raiders did work out tight end Dakota Allen, who did play some quarterback in college. He also was a little bit of a punter as well. Seems like a pretty versatile player overall. And he suffered an ACL injury last season. Sounds like he's pretty well recovered from that. The big thing to note here is this. The Raiders are going to keep their tabs on Dakota. They want to see how he plays. They think he's a pretty good athlete. The signing did not happen today as I am recording. But from what I am being told, it's not out of the realm of possibility that the Raiders do sign Dakota Allen. All right, it's time now to get into our rumors here. And I haven't done the Just Win Babies in a while. So I figured, you know what? Let's get into some Just Win Babies. Jimmy Garoppolo, he's been struggling at Raiders training camp. I mean, there was one day he threw like seven interceptions in back-to-back -back practices. So, is it time to panic with Jimmy G? I'm going to give this one only one just win, baby. I'm going to say that there is a small shred of truth in terms of panicking. I get it. I get when you see seven interceptions, when you see up and down, coming off of a year where you had Derek Carr, you needed to feel... Maybe a little bit better about the quarterback situation. Here's the thing, though. It's just training camp. He does look like he's working off some rust. He does look pretty sharp in the short passing game. But from what I understand, the Raiders are trying to throw the ball deep. Why? They're trying to practice what they are not good at, which I am 100% on board with. That's exactly what practice is for. And on top of that, I don't mind my quarterback taking a few shots that, you know, he might not be able to make in the game because you want to be able to test what guys you can trust to make that 50-50 ball. And anytime you talk about QB play, it's always going to get blown out of proportion. But I saw my guy Sanjidi posted this picture on Twitter, and I know it's going to look weird. I just want you to look at the title here. This is all the way back in 2019 during training camp when Jimmy Garoppolo threw five consecutive interceptions in practice. Guess what? That season, Jimmy Garoppolo and the San Francisco 49ers went on to the Super Bowl. Bottom line, sometimes training camp gets blown out of proportion. I am this many years old when I remember. How about all the training camps leading up to it where Derek Carr apparently looks unbelievable. He looks great. The Raiders defense looks better than ever. It's the offseason. Sometimes things get blown out of proportion. And if there is one thing that I have realized looking at a lot of these beat writers, they just seem super bitter right now covering this Raiders team. So I'm not going to put too much stock early into the struggles because to me, Jimmy Garoppolo is a gamer. And a lot of times when the lights are on, when it's time to play, some players have that ability to flip that switch. And to me, that's what Garoppolo ultimately is. Now, if you do not know, the Raiders play the San Francisco 49ers in preseason action on Sunday, and we're going to be battling the 49ers report here at Chat Sports, whether it's Super Chats on game day. But starting right now, we are doing a subscriber battle. So whatever channel gets the most subs this week, they win. If they're going to be battling on the field, I'm going to be battling on YouTube. So don't let me down because this is a rivalry that I know a lot of y'all are going to want to win. And if you enjoy our live Madden simulations, well, guess what? For actual game day, we get even crazier. And we're going to be live here, Raiders preseason game against the Niners. We're going to go live an hour before kickoff. We're going to get the tailgate party started. I'm hoping to see Aiden O'Connell out there throwing. The Niners have Sam Darnold, Trey Lance, and Brock Purdy all playing. So if you haven't already, subscribe, join us. For a lot of Raiders Niners updates the entire week. Let's go to the next story here on the Raiders report. Jacorian Bennett, the favorite to start on the outside this upcoming season. I'm going to give this one three just win babies, and it's pretty likely. I 
Love me some Duke Shelley. And this is not a Duke Shelley losing the battle. It is Ja'Cory and Bennett, the Raiders rookie, who they drafted, traded up for technically, at 103 overall. It sounds like Bennett's the guy. Like, he's going to be the guy. He's been working on the outside a lot with the starting unit. And any time that Marcus Peters is on the field, it just seems like Bennett is right there trying to create some chemistry, which I like because that also means Nate Hobbs is going to be playing in the slot. If the season were to start today, I think it's Ben on the outside, Marcus Peters on the outside, Nate Hobbs in year three right in the middle. But to me, Ben is an athletic freak. And I talked to a Raiders player, this was two weeks ago, and I continually bring it up here. He flat out told me if they were to do a race right now, Bennett wins the race. He might be the fastest guy on the field. His athletic ability is showcasing itself. I said the other day I made this analogy where people always say pound for pound. Well, Jacory and Bennett, inch for inch, might be right up there with somebody like a Tyree Wills because he's a long, lanky, super athletic player. And right now, as it stands, this is an old depth chart. But Bennett's probably on the outside where Duke Shelley is, and that's really an impressive thing, especially for the young Raiders rookie. Now, speaking of inches, if you want to be, you know, gain an extra inch or two because that's what football is all about, go to manscaped.com, code Raiders, 20% off, and make sure that you use code Raiders because that's how Manscaped knows that y'all coming from me, and then that's how you guys get the discount. I will always recommend the performance package. Usually, it's this price, but if you use code Raiders, you get it for this price here. It's hot as balls in Las Vegas. It's hot as balls across the United States right now. And if your balls are sweating, it's probably because you're not using the deodorant. And if they are going to sweat, hey, use the ball toner. So if you do get lucky enough to get down there, or she gets lucky enough to get down there, it's smelling great. The Lawnmower 4.0. You can use it to trim up your body. You can use it to trim up your ball sack. It's also shower safe, so you can take it in the shower. It's got an awesome light at the edge, so when you are trying to get into your dark areas or, I don't know, if you use it on your black hole, you're not going to cut yourself. Shout out also to Manscaped for the boxers, the weed whacker, if you got hair in your ears, your nose. Bottom line is Manscaped is here to help all the guys look great. So go to Manscaped.com. Shout out to them for sponsoring the Raiders Report. Let's go to Jermaine Illuminor, who... Did an interview on this show, basically naked in a sauna, and can confirm, uses Manscaped. Is Jermaine Illuminor going to be starting at right guard this upcoming season for the Silver and Black? This one, I got to give two just win babies, and I do think people are talking. It's a coin flip. And I jokingly say this because I will say I, we got a lot of NFL teams here at, at, at Chat Sports. Raiders got to have the worst beat writers in all of sports, right? Vic Tafer goes on Twitter, says, Jermaine Illuminor has been working at right guard. Illuminor quote tweets it and says, it's not true. It's not true. No, I'm not. Here's the exact example of it. The problem is for these beat writers and why I'll always say you can't take everything that they say at training camp is because they're looking at what happens during the plays with binoculars. They're two football fields away. McDaniels and Ziegler don't let beat reporters get close to the action because they want to have the secrecy. However, even though Illuminor has called out Tafer for spreading fake news, which I think is just the type of guy Illuminor is, he sees something fake out there, he's going to tell you, this doesn't mean that he won't play right guard this upcoming season. I know the Raiders like their Munford, and Munford's going to continue to get work. When I have messaged Jermaine, he wants to play right tackle, and he believes that he can be the best right tackle in football with Colton Miller. However, though, Illuminor has also told me that if he needs to play guard to make the overall unit the best that it possibly can, he's going to do that. So let's just say this right now. Let's play a little bit of a game. We're sitting in the room with Carmen Brasillo, and you got two options for your Raiders starting offensive line against the Denver Broncos. You got the left option which has Jermaine Illuminor playing right tackle, and you can rotate different right guards in there. Let's say Greg Van Roten, you could put Natane Moody there. Would you go with the left side of the offensive line, or would you go with the right one, which is Colt Miller, Dylan Parham, Andre James, Jermaine Illuminor at right guard, and then Thayer Munford at right tackle. So go down to the comments section right now and let me know. Are you going with the left, or are you going to go with the right? My answer personally is I would roll with the right side of that screen graphic because to me, the Raiders have a higher upside with Thayer Munford at right tackle. 
I do think Illuminor is a better right tackle than Munford as it stands right now. But I also think that the overall offensive line is better if you get some work in there with Thayer. Because to me, this team, this organization wants to see what they have at right tackle with Munford. And if they're really sold on him, a few years ago when he was first coming out of Ohio State, there were some people that thought he could have been a first-round pick. Like, that's how highly touted he was. So you let Carmen Rosillo work with him for here for a little bit. You kick Jermaine in at right guard. It gives you a little bit more versatility overall and see what you got. But you do this because you believe in Munford. If you put him out there and he's not ready, you're trying to get Jimmy Garoppolo killed, which is the last thing I want. The only way Munford's going out there, if he's ready. We got three more rumors to get into here on the Raiders report. Well, let's now talk about Trey Tucker. And I had a source tell me that Trey Tucker will be the Raiders' best draft pick this season. I always give credit to my sources. And I always respect their opinion. But I'm going to respectfully disagree here on this one. This one's only one just win, baby. And I think it's a small shred of truth that Trey Tucker ends up being the best draft pick for the Raiders. And the reason why I say that is I just have a lot of hype around some of the other players here on this team. I will admit that he does look like a steal for the Raiders at pick 100 right now. They're using him a lot. Whether it's pre-snap, whether it's going to be special teams, whether his involvement in the offense and... When I tell you that the Raiders are going to use him a ton this season, that doesn't necessarily translate to a lot of touches. It translates into them respecting his athletic ability, and it is like they want to turn him into Cheetah 2.0. Right? Like I saw my guy Graf, he did a show, and it was like titled Cheetah 2.0, and that stuck in my head. But they want to use him the way that the Chiefs used to use Tyree Kill, the way that the Dolphins use Tyree Kill now. They want to use him for pre-snap reads where he's going back and forth, back and forth. You have to respect his athletic ability and his quickness, quickness plus the speed. It makes him almost untouchable in open space right now. Yeah, quick knees. I mean, I'll tell you what, you're going to have to have some quick knees to be able to take him down, Chugs. But like, seriously, when you catch the football and you make other dudes look like they're running on ice or like they have skates, and I've been told like they can't, sometimes you can't even get a hand on them. That's how quick Twitch he is right now, and I do think that he's going to have a hell of a year. And the Raiders' 2023 draft class, as it stands right now, Tyree Wilson, they're still hoping that he's ready to go in week one. Michael Mayer is going to have a good impact this season. I do think Byron Young's going to have a hell of an impact. Ja'Cory and Bennett sounds like he's going to be starting on the outside. I don't really think you're going to see much of Aiden O'Connell. Chris Smith's going to have a good year. Reports Omari Bernie's been impressing early on. And that's the Jade Silvera, from what I understand, has been taking advantage of the fact that Neil Farrell Jr. isn't out there on the field right now. And he's going to be a solid run stopper for the Raiders. So until I see Tucker on game days, it's really going to be hard for me to gauge the hype because I remember, oh my gosh, what was the guy's name from Cal? He was a member of the Cowboys for so many years. Small, Tavon Austin. I had somebody tell me that he looks like Tavon Austin, and maybe that's the case. But right now in training camp, guys know that they're not going to get laid out. And when you're a player like Trey Tucker, you're going to use that to your advantage. He's an incredible athlete. People don't dispute that. But when it's actually game day and you know you're going to get hit, that changes the way that you run a little bit. So I do think I got to see that. But I'm not trying to take anything away from Tucker. It's just I'm not going to sit up here and say that that's going to be the Raiders' best draft pick this season. If I was a betting man, I'm going to expect a bigger impact from Tyree Wilson. I'm going to expect a bigger impact from Michael Mayer, Byron Young, and Ja'Cory and Bennett. I believe all four of those players will have a bigger year than Trey Tucker this upcoming season. And I think most Raider fans would probably agree with that statement. And if Tucker ends up having a better year than all four of those guys, believe me, I will proudly take that L because that means Tucker truly did ball out. Now, I want to give a shout out here to some of the Nodi gang from the videos that went out on August 6th. We got Tomb Raider, Tyler, Raider, Sancho D, and Matthew Yoakum. If you don't know what the Nodi gang is, it's people who are not only subscribed, but take pride in trying to be one of the very first people that comment on a Raiders Report video. If you're a part of the Nodi gang, show out in the comment section. Who knows? You might see yourself here on the show. Let's go to another story here. The defense looks legit. I got to give this one four just win babies. And I laugh when I say it because 
just like I just said about Tucker, until I see it on game day, it's hard for me to believe. However, the amount of people that I talk to, the amount of Raiders players that I have mentioned, I said, dude, is it for real? They're saying, yeah, the defense has been flying all over the football field. And one of the things that I love that I heard recently was Patrick Graham simplified his defense this year. And it's really showing. It's allowing players like Nate Hobbs, Merrick, to not think so much and just go out there and just be athletic. It's helping a guy like Marcus Peters comes in and is showing, hey, you want to be able to create turnovers? Cool. This is the type of swagger you need to have out there on the field. And they're being physical. The depth out there has been really solid. And the Raiders' defense right now is winning training camp. They're out playing the offense, and it doesn't sound like it's all that close. And, yeah, I get it. It's training camp. But with the amount of money that the Raiders spent on offense and the defense, if it's playing up to that level, good things could be happening here for this team. Now, in terms of some of my defensive standouts, Crosby and Chandler Jones. Like I've heard Crosby literally is just, like, unguardable. You can't handle them. Chandler Jones looks a lot slimmer. Peters, Ja'Cory, and Bennett. Nate Hobbs, I believe that's going to be your starting cornerback rotation. Almeek Robertson and Sam Webb have really stood out. Marcus Epps and Trevon Merrick have both looked good. And then Isaiah Palomeo continues to show that he is getting better and better in the coverage game. These are the top 10 players that I would say have really stood out. I'm not saying like anybody expected anything different from Crosby, but right now these 10 players have really stood out from uh, what I've heard. Let's go to the final story here on the Raiders board and maybe one of the reasons why you clicked on this video here. The Raiders could possibly rescind Josh Jacobs' franchise tag. This was a story that PFT broke down. And you know what? Before I give you my answer, what do you guys have to say? Show the Raiders. Rescind the franchise tag for Jacobs. Type R. If that happens, you save $10.1 million, but Jacobs turns into a free agent and he's free to sign with anybody. Or you type D for don't. PFT went with this article. They went with the idea. And I saw it and I had to bring it up on today's show because it is zero just win, babies. Tuck rule, tuck that. The Raiders, if the Raiders took away Jacobs' franchise tag and they let him hit free agency, that's a fireable offense for both Ziegler and McDaniels. And I know what PFT did. I saw the article out there. I saw some people talk about it. I'm sorry. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, why on earth would you let a running back who had over 2,000 total yards on your team hit the open market? With teams like the Chiefs and the Broncos reportedly being interested, I I'm sorry. Like, for you to even come up with this idea and think that it's a possibility... Just shows your lack of football knowledge. And I understand how tough it is to make football content in the offseason. Yes, I make rumors all the time. I don't make them. I talk about rumors. Let me clarify that. But I started doing this show because I saw articles out there like PFT. And I was like, holy shit, I got to give my opinion on this. Because it makes absolutely, positively no sense for the Raiders to take away the franchise tag. And if you're an organization... That lets your franchise quarterback go in Derek. I will still say the divorce with Derek Carr was the perfect thing that the Raiders needed to do to move on. But how do you explain to your fan base? How do you explain that you are a competent NFL franchise for you to let go of your quarterback and your star running back and not get any draft capital for it? Like you gave Derek Carr the no trade clause. Okay, that one you kind of did to yourself, but you were able to get out of that contract. If you can't get anything for those top two players, I'm sorry. That is a major, major loss for the Raiders. So to me, the Raiders have four options here with Jacobs. Either Jacobs plays on the franchise tag and makes $10.1 I will say, if the Raiders were to take away the tag, he, Jacobs has got to realize nobody's giving him $10.1 million at this point of the offseason. Nobody. I would say your other option here is you work on a one New Year deal, which I put out a video. I want to say that one out on Saturday. I'll put it down in the comments and in the description of today's show where you work out a new one-year deal with some incentives that if the Raiders make the playoffs, Jacob's going to make more money. You could tag and trade Jacobs. Your other option is Jacobs just sits out. Because if I'm the Raiders, I would rather Jacobs miss the first 10 weeks of the season because he doesn't make any money during that time. I would ra rather the Raiders not have Jacobs the first 10 weeks. He comes back November 14th. You pay him... He would basically make it somewhere around like $5 million for the final games of the season. 
I'd rather you pay him that $5 million instead of him not go to another team for an entire year and now maybe the Broncos, maybe the Chiefs, maybe another team has your star running back and you don't get anything for it. I would rather Jacob sit out than you just take away the franchise tag and then he can sit or go play or anywhere. Sorry, saw the idea, had to talk about it. It makes absolutely no sense for the Raiders to take away his franchise tag. If you made it this far in the video, you're an absolute real one, man. Spam RO4L down in the comments right now, and I'll, uh, you know what, Chugs? If you see RO4Ls on the next video, we'll give some shout-outs the next time we go live tomorrow here on the Raiders Report.